Uh, here's the update on Porzingis. We'll have a press release a little later on. You got the correct what, spelling what on did this? He, what did he give you at the time on Porzingis? Um, uh, that, well, we'll see. Uh, no, he's feeling good. Day, Looks you know, good. It's the day-to-day yeah, yeah. thing. Like, you know, we'll see how it goes. Thing. Huh. I'm like, all right, well, that's great. Still not talking to the doctors. <laughs> he doesn't speak to them. No. He doesn't speak to the doctors. Right. They released a statement with the exact... <laughs> About an hour after we got off the phone. The Latin them. version yeah. of the uh, tendon that was torn. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Whereas, again, last week I, I said, you know, you've said you don't speak to the doctors. I don't. <laughs> no, I, I don't. I don't totally believe that, but okay. Well, anyway, here's the news on Porzingis. You've heard it by now, and that is he's considered day-to-day after dealing with an ankle issue. Let's just sum it up as that. I don't need to get into the particulars uh, to maybe make it in its most basic terms. There's a sheath. There's a tendon. It moved. It's partially torn, we'll assume. Uh, based on that press release, that's how it sounds. That's how it's worded. Can you just try to pronounce it? I have to read it again. Hold on. Let me get the let me get the press press release. <laughs> Why did you guys try to pronounce it yesterday and fail miserably? No, no, no. It's a torn medial retinaculum. Is that what it is? Retin retin that sounded right. Yes, that's the way act. It's uh, pronunciated. Ret- retinaculum. Yes, retinaculum. A torn medial retinaculum allowing dislocation of the posterior tibialis tendon in his left leg. Did I do that? I could play a doctor. Yeah. There you go. There it is. Well, uh, Mr. Porzingis, uh, from looking at the imaging on this, you've suffered a torn medial retinaculum. Oh, what does that mean? It means your ankle's effed. That's what it means. Do you think he's done? I don't. I do. I think he's all done. I don't think you're going to see him tonight. And if the Celtics win, you really have no shot of seeing him again. If they lose, it might open the door again. But I think they're going to play this safe with Chris Stapps Porzingis. I would say, like, from my take on it, I would say that you would have to because of the investment of the player and the type of player he is. And I know there's video of him, and this is why I say it. I don't think he's done. He had socks and slides on and shorts, Celtic shorts, and he was coming back from doing the interview. You just, just see him walking underneath. There was no limp. He was kind of sliding along walking. And, and I've been around these guys that have these type of things, and I'm not doing the, the injury comparison because I didn't. I don't know anybody that had the torn sheath that, that had tendon move, but I know guys that had bad ankles. I know guys that have bone chips and ankles, and you shoot it up and you tape it and you play. Now, we're talking about different type type of sport. Um Shilling, I mean, the first thing you think here is shilling with the bloody sock, the torn sheath on the exterior. Now, this shillings was the exterior of the ankle, correct? So it was the outside to where you could actually see the stitch. He took the picture of it. You saw it. They stitched it from the outside. Um, Porzingis is on the interior of the ankle, which is different. So, and I, I've i watched video of him after he, after he hurt it, supposedly, when you know he, he leaned in for that rebound and he kind of had it bent underneath him and he went back on defense Tatum missed that layup or got blocked down the other end. Porzingis gets the block to get him back into transition. So he went up and down the court after he hurt it. And I think it it probably hurt more, and that's why you saw what he did and when Joe called the timeout to get him out eventually that he was pretty sluggish getting up and down the court. But initially he moved around on it and played on it and jumped on it. McCone, is he done? I I think he is. I think he's going to tape it up and try and give it a go, and then they'll probably shut him down is what's going to happen. You think he goes tonight? He plays tonight. I don't know, and I don't know what to trust with any of this stuff. I really don't. With the whole Luca thing over the weekend, and you know, obviously he probably took the shot, and that was the report yesterday that Luca took a shot to numb the area up. He went and played, but this isn't miserable. about t- this is about pain about, management. This is that. about preventing hurting a guy more falling. serious yeah. injury is what it is. Well, that, pro- that's what it's about, and so I think it it's it absolutely begs a bigger conversation about him as a player and how we felt about him when the Celtics acquired him. Yeah, which was he's made of glass. You've got to try and keep him healthy. Yep. You've got to manage him over the course of the season so that he is available by the time you get to May and June. Well, here we are in May and June, and he's not available again. And here's the problem, and I've seen this with a million guys. Like you get one part, and I've talked talk to you about Drew with the you know like the uh, the shoulder injury. You know, when you separate your shoulder, you get bad mechanics. You end up hurting other other parts of your body. I think his build and his type, and he's so long and gangly, like with the calf on the other 
foot, I mean, on the other leg, that you sort of compensate. You're, you start pressing off the other foot because your body doesn't feel right on one side. And you're really you're really compounding the problem on the other side to where your body's now not used to having that type of torque. And I see guys get hurt all the time. Guys will blow out the other knee because the other knee's you know, not great. And you don't feel as explosive pushing off that one leg. You push off the other, and then all of a sudden the, the, ten, the tendon snaps. Yeah, the morning like, show had Dr. J- Jess Flynn on, and she, she was talking about the same thing, overcompensating. Oh, you overcompensate. It's, it's very common with yeah. athletes. High-end athletes, you overcompensate, especially with leg injuries. Yep. And you know that's what they were worried about with him was the potential of him harming his Achilles on that on that leg. Because that was what Durant did, right? Durant had the calf, had yes. that upper leg strain, and it ended up tearing his Achilles yep. on that same same side because of the compensation of where the force goes to other parts of your body. And that's what I would worry about with him because his body is I'm not sure what, I buy the overcompensation thing. You know? No, but just think and here's why. So with, any, damn frail. with any other player, I would say, yeah, sure. And it is the opposite leg, by the way. It's not the same leg yeah. that the calf injury right. and this ankle injury have happened. So I, I can I can understand why that could be the case. Hey, a guy is favoring one leg, he's putting too much on it, and that's why it happens. I, I don't buy it because it's this player. Because he's had numerous ankle injuries and knee injuries and back injuries and wrist injuries. The guy has had a lot of injuries in his career. That's why I don't know if I buy that. I just think it's another Chris Stapp's Porzingis injury. Stuff he's that often is common. Hurt. Yep. Stuff, stuff that's common with him. And I remember wa- watching his stuff with Victor Web- Webanyamu before he, before he came into the league and how much prep because of the size of his feet. And the way he's sort of flat-footed, the prep they have to, that has to go into taking care of his feet and legs to get him ready to play. And he's a young kid. Yeah. Like, that guy's a kid. But because of the size of these guys and the way the feet are, that they have to prep him going into games to get the foot loose. Like, that's that's preventative-type stuff that you have to worry about with guys this size. Like, Chris Sell's always hurt, right? Like, another guy that body build. torque stuff. Like, things don't go well for yes, him. Yes, Porzingis is the Chris Sale of he the is, Celtics. Kind of. <laughs> that's who he is. Yeah. Like this, we talked about this the other day. Like moving forward, we all think they're running it back, regardless of the outcome of the series. This team's staying intact, but long term wise, like he's a good player, he's making a lot of money, but can you trust him always being there? Like he's almost gravy if you have him. He's a luxury. He's like a luxury to them right now. Yeah, I don't think he's in the long term plans of the Celtics. I don't either. I think it's like a two, and, two, two to three, maybe if that. And and so I think that I would not put it past them to say whether we want him available to us at the start of next season or we want him available this off season. Yeah. Wink, wink. We need to protect this injury. We need to make sure he doesn't need to go for a surgery. Yeah. And so I, I think that's why ultimately you heard Joe Missoula say they've taken the decision out of his hands. And when Missoula said that yesterday, that to me was a signal that we're not allowing him to play. Yeah. He might want to play. He might be able to walk around. He might want to tape it up and give it a go. We're not letting him do that. Well, it also takes him off the hook for the comment about I'll die out there, right? And so now all of a sudden the organization steps in and says, you know what, it's not his call. It's not his decision about doing that. And that, that's why I'm, I'm with you. I, I don't think he plays tonight. I don't think you see him again for the rest of the series. I don't think so. I agree with you, McCone. Zo thinks there's a chance we see him. I think there's a chance. If you like that clip, check out more videos from Zolak and Bertrand here. For more Celtics analysis and opinion, hit this playlist. And for all the latest from the Sports Hub, download the app at 985thesportshub.com.